Patrol, uh, are we good for release? Copy, good for release. Good for release. Okay, Herc's clear the transom. This is an audio slate for dive number 2020. UTC time is 19.0105. Mark. Okay, all stations, uh, Hurricane Atlanta are clear of Nautilus. Copy.
Should we take bets on when it uh, starts to deform? Or what happens, maybe? Implosion? Uh, control, uh, deck, all stop, five zero. Copy. Gave Robert a heart attack for a second there. Gave you a heart attack for a second. <laughs> All right, how's it going everyone? 
Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. I think I don't hear anyone else on SPL, so I'm just talking into the void. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Hey, there he is. That's Jonathan. Hello. Hello. Oh, I need to go get my costume on. Oh, gosh. Well, happy Halloween, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. My name's Madison. I'm standing in for Devin right now for the next few minutes. We just launched the vehicles. Um, we're heading down to Kamaehua Kanaloa Seamount, which is a submarine volcano. Um, and as you can see there in Sat Feed 1, we've brought with us two Halloween goodies. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> about that. Me too. I'm, I'm curious to see what's What's going to happen? I so I don't think anything's going to happen. I think what what was going to happen already happened, though. So you Wait. get the biggest change in percentage change in volume at the first like upper 30 meters. What so what what was predicted to happen, Robert? Versus what what are you observing? Well, I is myself definitely didn't happening. think anything would happen, and that appears to be the case. That nothing's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> what Robert is referring to is there was an ongoing discussion on whether or not a pumpkin could implode. Um, of course, uh, it, it it does appear, and all of our ROV folks were like, "Well, this is way too porous to happen." <laughs> but here we are. Yeah. So you can see pumpkins are yeah. Ocean proof. <laughs> 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 Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Uh, actually, looks like a bit of an orange on the other side there. We're just out here for the sake of science, really. I mean, 100%. <laughs> we're, we're, we're here to represent. Uh -huh. And uh, no matter where you're at, I think on the East Coast, I bet you that kids are getting ready to actually get going out, right? I sure hope so. Do we have candy on the ship? Because I am missing some. I have way too many, too, oh, way too many of the candies. You do? I've been. I know. Yeah. I, I have public no control. You have public candy. You yeah. Have private candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know where I know where the ROV shops are. There we go. Huh. I've been spacing out my candy distribution, so I've got more. <laughs> it is true that out of all people on the ship, the uh, video department has truly led in the spirit of giving and uh, awesome candy. It was brought nightly to our our, uh, our evening coordination meeting and much appreciated. Oh gosh, I know. Nothing like a whole bowl of candy at 1800. Yeah, <laughs> really, really sets you up for that nice sleep. <laughs> yeah. We also have some costumes. I see Johan up there, sat feed one. Johan, what's uh, what are you representing right now? I think you need to put your your top on there. <laughs> okay, I'll probably have to mute for that. That'll be a little loud. <laughs> this is this is what those uh, the lipstick cams were made for, right here. <laughs> yes. Rarely used, but when they are, it's uh, it's a key feature of. Is that a, a deep sea praying mantis that I see? It is, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Rarely sighted. Rarely sighted. I'm going to highlight this one. We're going to be able to see <laughs> Johan uh, navigating entirely with two small claws. <laughs> pack, yeah, pack, it makes pack. it hard to <laughs> touch the buttons, but we'll make it work. <laughs> Looking for a ship move. <laughs> Nice. I've seen a couple other costumes on the ship. We have Ursula floating around. We have a Medusa. Uh, uh, anglerfish. Anglerfish, yeah. Yeah, I do like that anglerfish hat. <laughs> that is cool, yeah. So Devin will come in here and in the next couple minutes we'll see her anglerfish costume. Um, Slow-mo oh. is a pirate. Slow-mo oh, yeah. slow slow the sloth. Uh, Ali, one of our, our science communications fellows, has a uh, theme uh, animal. Her, yeah, her mascot. Her mascot, yeah, for, for, her, for the public schools that she teaches in. Apparently uh, a great social media following called Slow-mo the sloth. And Slow-mo has been uh, going around to the favorite spots on the ship, introducing people. And... Uh, new careers, and is now dressed as a pirate, which is very, very awesome. Slum has really been a team player, too. He's contributed a lot to NA-156. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, I saw him helping with the winch yesterday. Yeah, and and and, and during our most dramatic moment when uh, Dan so masterfully cut us off of a uh, brief entanglement, Slomo was there all the way, providing, <laughs> providing us that silent support that only a sloth can give. <laughs> 
watching over this control van and was the true steady steady voice while uh you know the front row was was really really just freaking out really held the team together completely out of control yeah. in the front that's not that that is a joke they, you know dan dan and tj cute cool as a cucumber back then cool as a deep sea pumpkin cool as a deep sea pumpkin Speaking of cool, what temperature are our pumpkins right Ooh, now? Ooh, that's a great question. Let's take a look, see. Do, 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 70.1 degrees Fahrenheit. We're at 600 feet, 185 meters, 21.2 degrees Celsius. It's honestly quite warm. Yeah. Wait, where are you looking? I'm looking at the... Uh, the pumpkin sensor? The pumpkin yeah. sensor, yeah. Wait, Dan, Dan put a Wi-Fi enabled pumpkin sensor. He didn't. He didn't tell you. I thought that was standard operating procedure. He's probably he's probably monitoring this pressure on the pumpkin so right the, now from so his. So the CTD says it's 14 degrees. Maybe my uh, maybe Water my data is a little delayed here. Uh. I'm just going off of the. Well, I mean Fahrenheit. Who who operates in Fahrenheit? I don't know. Honestly? I don't know. Me. <sighs> the fool. The temperature is the hard one, you know. Uh, I can, I can grasp the distances and and weights, but not so much temperature. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder how much resistance a pumpkin would put if we if we if we put it under an electrical load. What is the resistance of a pumpkin in seawater? Well, well, once it's soaked up with seawater, I think it's pretty. You know. Pretty low resistance. If you're a young uh, student out there, this is a fantastic science fair project. I wouldn't recommend building on a submersible out of pumpkins, though. No. No. <laughs> no. That doesn't seem like a wise idea. No. Next week on Cinderella. Despite the fact that they <laughs> seem to be holding together, I think if you carved them out, they wouldn't hold together as good. I wonder if they'll change weight when we get them back on board. Yeah. Like if they'll be gonna, super waterlogged. Oh, yeah. man. We should have done, 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 done a before and after. You still got pumpkins left. That's true. Wait, that is true. <laughs> and more dives. And more dives. Yeah, it's going to be fully saturated for sure. I, did, I thought they would just kind of gradually wilt away. I don't know why that was in my mind. But. Oh, Johan, somebody just said that they... They see a praying mantis in the control van. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I see one too. <laughs> oh, well, that's totally messed up. Why did I do that? Yeah, I'd love to hear from folks viewing at home what they're dressed up as. We've got a lot of cool costumes on the ship here. Thank you. Uh, yep. Robert. Roger. Speaking of costumes, can I please get a hard reboot on Triclops? Hard reboot. And is Triclops all the way in right now? Uh, I just pushed the the porch out. I haven't done anything with uh, the Triclops. Roger, could you turn off the down lights temporarily for me? Uh, yeah. And then we'll restore them for that. Ooh, that's dramatic pumpkin lighting, though. Look at that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's all the off angle, right, Pete? <laughs> Just look at that. I'm going to flag that as dramatic pumpkin lighting in our yeah, highlight. Yeah, no, I like that. That's spooky. <laughs> that's spooky town. It is spooky. <laughs> and, oh, is the side light on, on, um, on uh, the craft? Uh, I don't know what light channel it is, but it's I'm sure uh, it is. It's it's the starboard. I mean, I have no independent port. control of the uh, of that. Yeah, it's the starboard port relay. Biobox relay, power light. Yeah, so starboard port and starboard are on. Can oh. you turn it off? I'm just observing all this. Uh, so it is tucked in. So it's it's, you know. Arm is not out. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm not okay. You can turn all the lights back on. I'm not being very smart. The reason my screens aren't updating is because I asked you to turn off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's oh been, yeah, it was a long yeah. night. It was a long <laughs> night, everyone. You like, want why, it back on though? Yes, please. Why? Why there isn't my? Why aren't the feeds updating? 
too much candy last night, apparently. Yeah, I'm just re really ripping it up. <laughs> So did you want the uh, cameras extended? Um, until I get a feedback, no, not yet. Right. I'm just trying to see. There was a lot of flare on the lens, and I'll bet you it's because of the the Whoa. new craft. We'll call it the craft light. Yeah, that's pointed right in. So yeah, yeah. It's it's a dramatic lens flare, but not not required at this moment. But that's what's giving you your pumpkin lighting. Yeah, I got to like dramatic pumpkin lighting. All right, failed to establish a new connection. The latency logger is back. Oh, on. we have an anglerfish joining us. <laughs> oh. All right, okay, I'm gonna step away. Devin's popping in here, Devin the anglerfish. Thanks for letting me sit in with you guys, gals. Have a wonderful, is it day? It is day. It is day, yeah, it's only nine. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. From the who what? From the vents? So it's uh, about that far. <laughs> the temperature drops off like really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you have a temp probe, you have to get it like dead on the flow, you know? Very, very little, like maybe a couple degrees, maybe. Like if it's really cranking, but seawater makes a really good heat sink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's not gonna really be cranking here. It's you know it's some flow. You'll see shimmering water and stuff, but it's not it's not gonna be like blowing out. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not. It's not like the hydrothermal vents with the black smokers. And, yeah. Oh, fiddlesticks! <laughs> well, aloha, everybody. I see that we are well underway with our mission. Thank you for allowing me to join you a little bit later. My name is Devin. I am your science communication fellow on board for this ship, and we are look at us in the middle of a science experiment right now. Satellite feed one with our pumpkins. How exciting. I am, it's scintillating truly. Yeah, I was just talking to a group of students in Tennessee and they were all making uh, hypotheses on whether or not the uh, pumpkins would implode or explode. I love that. Yes, yeah. yes, so <laughs> they have to stay tuned in order to. I think that the, they don't have to stay tuned, it's already, the experiment has been completed. <laughs> the experiment has been completed. How so? Robert, please tell. Uh, well, as I predicted, nothing happened. <laughs> as you predicted, nothing happened? Uh, yeah. You know, though, I don't think that there's been a conclusive evidence of this We're fact. We're at 460 until meters 460 deep. And, and so what is the pressure at we, 460 meters? We have 1,000 meters remaining. I mean, there's, there's a lot of opportunity <laughs> here. What if that gourd is, in fact, the perfect pressure well, vessel? What's Atmosphere. It could be. Yeah. We, we may find we may find a whole new conclusion. Fourteen to what point we, what? 
For any of our yes, younger I. learners out there, this is a good example that it's important to listen to people with experience, but never ask. Never stop asking those questions. Never stop asking questions and never stop testing your, your yeah, theories. You never because know. Sometimes previous generations did not, truly. This is true. Although Robert seems to be on to something right now, well, but we'll this just is have to hold true. it to a test and see but how we it do, is. We do indeed have an extra thousand meters to go before we this reach the, the incredible hydrothermal vent field here. We are expected to reach a dive depth today of 1,310 meters. So it's going to be very interesting to see just how far they go. Well... So, a pumpkin's not very structurally sound. But it's round. <laughs> I, I, or it, it Round is the, the best. Well, so right at the surface, in the first 30 meters is like the greatest percentage change in volume. Oh. So if something's going to, if it's weak, like a pumpkin, and it was hollow, it would, it would give up the ghost at right at the surface at 30 not, meters i'm not so. personally judging the relative you know strength so, profile but of a because pump. it's porous and the water's able to get through it yeah it uh there's no pressure differential and so the pumpkin's not going to squish hmm I so have we're how many psi are we now uh uh over 700 yeah at 1400 mm, meters it'll be <laughs> roughly <laughs> It's porous PSI. enough. Oh, wait, no, no, Pete's, Pete's, Pete's dropping a science fact. Can you, can you, can you please uh, repeat that? So 1,400 meters of depth in seawater, uh, according to the interweb, is uh, 2,038 psi. Yeah. It's, it's What's the equivalent in elephant standing on a penny? Well, an elephant's, <laughs> how much does an elephant weigh? 3,000 or something? I, in, 3, fact, I in fact did ask ChatGPT this. And it's apparently African or, or uh, Asian. Asian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too shady. Again, ChatGPT will give you whatever answer, but you got to know the right way to put it. Uh, Johan, I must say, for those of you that are able to look at satellite feed three, Johan is killing it as the praying <laughs> mantis right now. I didn't realize I was still yeah. on satellite feed. Yeah. Navigation in charge. It is, uh, uh, Johann, it is Halloween. We are celebrating. If Johan's parents or other relatives are watching, now would be a great be very time proud to of take your son. a screen capture and hold that against him forever. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, sad feed three. Um, Johan, now you're, you're currently doing your PhD at the University of Rhode Island. Is that correct? I am, yeah. What, what it, can you explain a little bit about what you're doing right now beyond, uh, beyond uh, being an exceptionally... Talented praying mantis. Yeah, talented navigator. praying mantis. <laughs> uh, sure, absolutely. Um, so I'm in a PhD program uh, in ocean engineering, and I'm focusing on ocean instrumentation, which means generally just uh, developing, deploying, and kind of fine-tuning uh, ocean equipment to help uh, the oceanographic field and uh, my particular instrument is a distributed temperature sensor, or DTS. And that's a pretty uh, niche and kind of new and novel piece of technology, at least for uh, ocean sciences. Um, yeah, so pretty much how it works is if you have a fiber optic cable, which is those thin hair-like pieces of glass that we use to send communication over very fast. Um, if you put one of those down and attach it to a laser with some sensors that can look at the light that's scattered back, you can measure temperature along the whole fiber. So for us, that means that we can lay out this thin uh, fiber on the seafloor or anywhere or deploy it off the side of the boat, and it's much more easy to manage than an array of temperature probes. And then we get the equivalent of a temperature probe. We get a temperature reading every quarter meter, which is a very high uh, spatial resolution for us. And yeah, so we can get some pretty large and pretty specific data sets, which is really great with this instrument. And so I've been working on uh, a few different ways of deploying it 
the main one being a in situ observatory where we have it in a pressure housing and we can drop it down. And we've tested it on sites like this, hydrothermal vent sites, where we have that big uh, temperature variation and temperature anomalies. And we've been seeing some pretty interesting stuff. So it's been huh. great so far. Fascinating. It's pretty, yes, very interesting. Very interesting. You've been uh, collecting enough data on, on this expedition to help you with your research? <laughs> I've been collecting no data, actually. No data? Yeah, but this will be interesting to see. I was on a cruise last month or so, and looking back at the dive logs of the different experiments that we performed here, uh, felt very familiar because uh, they had a super sampler and they were running IGTs, which are two different uh, other pieces of equipment that are used on hydrothermal vent sites pretty frequently nowadays. Uh, and that's exactly what my cruise was before. So uh, it'll be interesting to go to a site that's already kind of seen that stuff and hopefully find some data that's uh, comparable and we can look back and compare what we've seen before and how it looks now. Awesome, so we've got some requests for the anglerfish. Pete, is it possible that we put the anglerfish on screen? <laughs> I, I, so just, I don't want to deprive the public. I don't, I don't mean to be stupid, is that you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. me, it's me, yeah. Well, it's time to Devon for truly shine. Devin it's, the, I, I can Devin truly anglerfish. shine at this moment, that's absolutely right, with my bioluminescence. Just imagine your entire career and all the choices Has in your life have led to this moment of fame. <laughs> right now, down. we're about to go out on satellite feed three. Yes. The anglerfish. Yes. Hey, where are we going? Here anyway, I am. What's, uh, Here I am, everybody. 1152? Hello. Best the side angle, I don't know. The yeah, I'm, back I'm angle is pretty I'm good. I'm liking it. It's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. So, I got this handy dandy little little guy here. Uh, how are we celebrating? Um, of course, we've got our mantis. We've got our anglerfish. We've, we've got lots of things in the work. Check out our Instagram. Our Instagram has been going uh, uh, live here lately with all of our Halloween costumes as we're trying to have a little bit of fun aboard the ship and just break it up. But uh, we're entertaining ourselves today. Are we going to make pumpkin pies with these if they come back up? Well, we're going to an area which is pretty rich in, I believe, uh, hydrogen sulfides. I'm probably getting that Probably right. yeah. not a good idea. And so it's uh, because it's a hydrothermal vent field, there's probably quite a few heavy metals and other things that you wouldn't necessarily want in your pumpkin. With the pie. temperatures, though, we could cook them. I'm interested how it'll smell when we come out. Oh, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. Well, I don't Th think we're planning on landing and like sampling and stuff, so we're not gonna, this you got your cameras sticking out there in the danger zone, so. Yeah. Well, you know, no risk, no reward, <laughs> never mind. I uh, didn't say that one. So, so we had someone that was voting when we were talking about um, our students that were making their hypothesis of imploding or exploding. Uh, someone else had voted that they said neither. They think they'll infiltrate or saturate. Yep. There you go, Pete. <laughs> Now the question is, is the bigger the pumpkin, the weaker the structure? Oh. So Ooh. these little small guys are more dense in the middle, so maybe they have the ability to resist. I don't, well, I think it's how much moisture is already in them, you know? Like how saturated they start with. I did. These look kind of dry though, the one they got cut open, which was. Oh, we have one that's been cut open. Yeah. Oh, that's no fun. Well, I think that next time we should, maybe tomorrow, no. <laughs> I'd be interested to wrap one in a plastic bag like that was sealed and, and we can oh, then check the yeah. true structural integrity yeah. of the sphere of a pumpkin. And maybe yeah. there's a difference between a white pumpkin shape and the uh, orange ones there. Yeah, I, I don't think we have any other white ones though. I didn't know oh, we yeah. did that pressure we have Yeah, yeah we got right. a lot of variables going on. We know with scientific <laughs> experiments, it's important to only change one variable at a time. We might have to have a whole series of pumpkins go down with us next time to make that happen. Will we be giving the pumpkins to the sea creatures as a Halloween snack? That is not our plan. 
Uh, our plan, as long as they stay intact, is to bring them right back up so that they can have a, a tale to tell yeah. the places they've been and the things they've seen. I would like to think that uh, when we see that sea cucumber or halosaur down there, that they'll have a glimpse at not just the most scary thing in the world, which could be hydro, you know, like Hercules kind of coming up at them, but <laughs> they'll also be able to walk away saying, I saw a pumpkin yeah. for well, the first time in my life. What is a pumpkin? Hercules is very scary when it's got a it's knife out. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> this true. This is true. Yeah. This is true. We had a little. Oh, yeah, we did we get to see a Hercules action Yvonne the band. other day. Yeah. Yeah. But only uses it for defensive means. Uh, Robert, A.K.A. Aquaman. Uh, are oh, you? A, I know who that is. Oh, you do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, were, were you definitely a fan of Monty, Monty Python? Talking about the African versus European elephants. Is oh. that where that came from? I, wasn't that a sparrow? I think it was a sparrow that they were talking about in the Monty Python. <laughs> That's true. In fact, no, I did, I did, I did ask ChatGPT, um, African or Eurasian, and it did say in the earlier calculation, use the average weight for an elephant without specifying its type. However, to clarify, African elephants weigh between 4,500 to 6, 7,000, huh. and Asians between 24 and 4,000. So they're smaller. Oh, so that smaller species. So I, that sort of looked like maybe a Dumbo or perhaps even a vampire squid. What? what? <laughs> On Halloween? No way. It would be so Zoom appropriate. <laughs> it would be so appropriate. But it was in a side view. So side view. Uh, maybe they'll no. come back. I think they're gone. We can, oh, well. we can try and... I think a lot of people always gone. say, they'll tune in later once we reach the bottom. We'll <laughs> yeah, just let the true. first shift kind of do their thing. But that's that's what the magic is with uh, yeah, with diving the water column is the anticipation of what you could see. Well, we buzzed on by it. but Can you imagine being that octopus? You just... Yeah, around, doing, doing <laughs> octopus along. thing. Where you and get to see Hercules and pumpkins all in the same day. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would be cool to see a vampire squid today. Though. I would. I would enjoy it. It really would be. I can guarantee you that'd make an immediate highlight. I'd be calling up our team on shore. Post that live for sure. What did I do? I transformed, edit, transform, position, and crop. All right, as someone said, if nothing happens to these pumpkins, as Robert expects, maybe we should use them to build a new submarine technology. Yeah, no, I don't think that'd be a good idea. No. No. <laughs> I think if it was carved out, it would definitely give up very quickly. Absolutely, absolutely. Very shallow water. We're currently running a, uh, what do you call, my goodness, I've just lost it, uh, a survey. We're running a survey here. I've got uh, back and forth between the manis and the anglerfish. So guys do chime in and let us know which costume you like better. You're about two boats ahead of me right now. Oh, Johan. I didn't know it was Congrat a competition. Yeah, I didn't either, but apparently, <laughs> apparently. Robert, can I get another power cycle, please, sir? Yeah. Oh, Madison walked out. She was a walrus. She was a walrus. That's why yeah. I said check Instagram Live because we're we're going around the ship and posting everybody's everybody's costumes. Kristen, hi, sitting in the back row back here. All quiet. How are you today? I'm doing well. And can you tell us about your costume? I am a gnome. Ooh. You're a gnome. Yes. Aww. A seafaring gnome. A seafaring gnome. <laughs> as, I love it. As they are, as they are, you know? Yeah. It's the original Dr. Ballard of, of gnomeness. <laughs> In Monty Python, it says it was a swallow, a coconut. Swallow, right. Uh. Yeah, which begs the question, I know what a petrified trees and coconuts were found in the deep sea. Have there ever been any other things like pumpkins found? We did recently have a very interesting find. We were all excited for a short amount of time because we thought we had found something incredible, like a bone. I found a shipwreck once. 
Found a shipwreck. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, that turned out to be uh, just a tree. Remember the yeah, tree yeah. from a couple yeah, of days we did, ago? We did 3D print it, though. Oh, did we? Because we had so much question about whether it was a whale bone, we had 3D scanned it. Um, so it is now the highest resolution <laughs> um, piece of wood that it has probably ever been scanned at, at the depths we did. Very cool. Gee, that said, like, although it wasn't indeed like a whale bone, uh, tree falls are an incredibly rare thing to happen, and that seemed to be a, a pretty... Uh, fresh one and I could just imagine that uh, there's some good papers out there that have described just how much nutrients uh, something like a tree fall could represent for for a deep sea community absolutely to be clear that's definitely not my science but um, I'd be fascinated to learn a little bit more about uh, the importance of something like that it'd be interesting to go back if we ever could go back to that location and see how much has formed around it yeah and that could be something very interesting about this dive here so this dive was explored several times actually in the past uh, 20 years um, uh, several times by the team at hurl um, in the pisces the manned submersibles um, and most recently uh, actually by by our own ship uh, back on any 100 I'm forgetting the actual name of that cruise, uh, mm. but we were there approximately NA-100 expeditions ago um, and dove on the exact same spot that we're about to go down into. So with the wide field camera array and just more generally, we're very interested in measuring um, any changes and observing any changes that have happened for the central, I don't know if the right term is, uh, caldera for something like this but the central yeah. uh, feature where the hydrothermal vents were first seen inside of this crater um, and then i believe the plan is going to be to do a little bit more just novel exploit you want power back yes, yes sir you thank do. you so i did have someone asking they thought uh, a viewer seems to think um that the white pumpkin looks like it's changing colors does anybody want to Elaborate on Can why we that zoom might zoom back be? in on the pumpkins? Zoom back in on it. We need a white balance on that pumpkin. I might agree. It, is it getting a little warmer? It's tone? like it's a little bit. Are we absorbing colors? Are we changing colors? I think it's just that uh, the iris has been tweaked a bit. Oh, it could be. Yeah, that's true. Could be. Uh, iris isn't going to change the color, uh, but you think the, the color changed? The lighting is potentially changing a bit. Definitely, the deeper we go. Fascinating. Well, that is true. I guess for the first oh, three. Yeah, we had some. We had some surface light probably when we were looking at it before, and we don't anymore. Johan, we're tied three at three right now. Ooh, yeah. Close one. Those of you watching, be sure to type in the chat and let us know angler fish or praying mantis, which is your choice. We're going to keep a running total. S so the light at the end of yes. What is that in real? What is that signifying? Uh, this is, I'm, I'm getting your attention. Did it work? <laughs> it's exactly what it's meant to do. It's to meant to draw attention because you know anglerfish are very deep sea dwelling, and so they, they lure their prey into them um, by using their light. They just kind of dangle it and gotcha. shake it, and then something's very interested. And the closer it gets to it, then boom, there you go. So it's what that, that large mouth is for, so they can just kind of suck everything right in. Is that a bioluminescent? It is. White? Yeah. Wow, this one's battery operated, though. Yeah. <laughs> we have Nor Do we have Norbit back there? Or somebody doing the Norbit? Well, we don't have a ground, so. But are we Norbiting? Is somebody running the Norbit? K2, is K2 doing things? Oh, we've got a vote for the sea cucumber. Who's the sea cucumber? Do we Wait. have a sea cucumber? But we do have a vote for the gnome. Oh. I'm going to have to put you on this tally list. How <laughs> exciting. Oh. I, I am it. so excited for that. <laughs> we got a, a vote for the gnome. Very good.
I think that our ROV intern human there could be the sea cucumber that they're referring to. <laughs> I, I thought it was you, Jonathan. I thought you were the sea cucumber. I could be the sea cucumber. <laughs> it is kind of my life here, isn't it? <laughs> Those of you writing in asking about the costumes, please, if you have an opportunity, go over to Instagram uh, and check our live. We've been going around the ship trying to post everybody in their costumes and as uh, different shifts come on, we'll definitely be highlighting everybody. Um, but Instagram Live is going to be your your best bet for seeing uh, those if you can check that out. Yeah. Uh, I have to tend to go with this person who uh, typed in that anglerfish could eat everything possible, so I win by default. Right. That's what they say. I'm okay with that. I don't know. Praying <laughs> mantises are pretty tough. Yes, but how long would they survive in the water? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the uh, anglerfish wouldn't do, didn't do great on land either. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, it's 10 points for delivery. 10, yeah. yeah. That's, I, we'll just call that one even. Call that one even. Oh, my gosh. The what? <sighs> Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you for you those resets, by the it. way. I, I am clear with the uh, camera now. It's on well, someone had posted that Mabari has a massive tree fall that they've been monitoring. It's been very fascinating to watch it evolve as the habitat changes. And um, that's what we were talking about. And Jonathan had mentioned it was probably fairly new. I'm not sure how many years fairly new would describe, but we can also tell okay. by the uh, lack of life that's Roger. been around it and things that have um, graduated to it that we knew that it was fairly new, so it would be very interesting to be able to come back to that in a number of years just to see how much has changed and how much life has been able to call that home. Life finds Wait, away. which way are we going here? Are we Okay. Oh, and just speaking of life finds a way, um, that's another very interesting aspect of where we're going today. So this is... Uh, I believe, and again, this is this is really not my science. So, if there's someone out there, uh, either listening on the ship or a scientist ashore, or even a viewer on Nautilus Live, um, that can provide more um, insight into this from the papers, it'd be super appreciated. But I, I do believe that this is a newer hydrothermal vent system. And Are we on on all our mics working for the the lounge? Can't, can't hear, hear us, so we need to make sure that lounge. everybody's down there. We are all talking. Yeah. So if Madison can't hear anything. We might need. A little routing there. A little um, routing. We'll double check that. So one of the unique things, of course, uh, hydrothermal vents and the discovery of chemosynthetic life was um, one of Dr. Ballard's uh, very early um, discoveries in his exploration of the hydrothermal vent fields around um, the Galapagos. And chemosynthetic life in that instance was discovered uh, in the form of a uh, large number of uh, what are now called hydrothermal vent uh, tube worms. Um, which existed in incredible densities in and around hydrothermal vents. And, and I do believe that uh, similar species of tube worms and, and other species of chemosynthetic life has sub sub subsequently been found at other hydrothermal vents around the world, um, including those that we saw just uh, last year, or sorry, this year, um, out at Ocean Networks Canada um, at their Endeavour hydrothermal vent field. Um, However, this site that we're going to now, I don't believe, has uh, been colonized by any hydrotherm or any tube worms or other chemosynthetic life that I'm aware of. So this vent is a lot different than some of the other vents that you're describing. Yeah. This vent does not have high amounts of sulfide, like oh, like the black smokers do. Yeah, there's that's mostly iron. So these yeah. these uh, bacteria are mostly iron oxidizers. Oh. And there are a couple, they described a couple of larger um, macrobiota at this site, but it seems because it is constantly, it's very active and they have been sort of developing over time that they haven't seen the macrobiota in the last few dives that they've done at this particular site. But, but there are, there does appear to be uh, iron loving bacteria. Correct. Oh. Yes. There's been a lot of work done here with, uh, yeah, looking at, at that iron-loving bacteria. I think you could find some shellfish, mussels, or clams. Yeah, but, there's a yeah. few of those. I, the, like I said, that it seems like some of those um, 
communities kind of have not been identified in the last few dives of this site. And I don't know if that's just because of the evolution of the site. Uh, yeah. It sounds like some of it has kind of collapsed on itself as it evolves. And these vents are not quite as hot as the uh, black smoker event vents. Um, and the chemistry is, is really quite different than those sites as well. Now, Kristen, you're a biogeochemist, is that correct? That is correct. So what, what would make, what really excites you about visiting a site like this with uh, some of the uh, elements that you mentioned about uh, bacterial mats? Like what, what's truly unique about a site like this? Are, are those bacteria technically a chemosynthetic life form or? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So instead of using sunlight to, to um, Two cre beams. Cre create energy, they use Chemi uh, chemicals. So if that's right. iron, we're getting off the pumpkins onto the bottom. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna have to wrap up the chat here in a minute. Not sure. Mm -hmm. You can you can continue on with that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, this is actually a really exciting dive for me because the reason that I became a, a geochemist or a, mar a marine chemist was because I was a student a long time ago in fourth grade and watching uh, Dr. Ballard do a dive on uh, the vent fields in the Guaymas Basin. No way. Way. Um, so <laughs> very, very long time ago. That's um, awesome. Yeah, so I'm very excited to be diving on a hydrothermal vent, even though it's a little different than the ones in Guaymas Basin. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a full circle moment for Definitely me today. Definitely full circle. That's totally, that's <laughs> incredible. And I did hear Dr. Ballard was very excited as well this morning. Pumped to get back down to a hydrothermal vent. Uh, come on, you could see if you could spin around towards me. Okay. I'm just uh, still impressed that you had your essay yeah. from when you were then in might be too stretched out. That. That's yeah. so cool. You lost yeah. me. <laughs> what I realized yesterday when I was doing some research that the Office of Naval Research actually funded that project too. And I currently work for the Office of Naval Research, so I Beautiful find that also circles. to be, yes. And this this wow. uh, expedition is also funded by the Office of Naval Research. So it's been a long time that the Office of Naval Research has been funding uh, scientific events for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say, you know, for our viewers out there, not a lot of people have full visibility that the, um, the Office of Naval Research has been our principal funder for our entire internship program for... Um, a very long time. Yes. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know exactly how far back that, back that goes, but I wouldn't be surprised if the entire existence. Yeah, from, from the very from start. The very, yeah. um, you know, supporting STEM, supporting careers at sea, yeah. supporting fundamental research. Absolutely. Um, about our oceans and the ocean environment. So. Um, and because of them, I had the opportunity to talk to pre-K students that we're so excited to see and to learn about the ocean. So uh, that, re that, that funding is allowing doors to be open on yeah. many, many angles, and it's, it's truly a wonderful thing. Yeah. So while we're talking about funding of Office of Naval Research, we also have Perfect. internship okay. now, plans. Now we, gotta now wrap we have up to stop. The, we have to stop talking. Oh, okay, we have right. to stop. Right. Okay, well, we'll <laughs> save that for later for All right. sure. More soon. That's important information to come up. Pumpkin still intact. Oh, okay. Do we want to look at the bottom first and do our white balance and all that good stuff, or uh, what's the deal? Science. Do you want to see the bottom? No, I say jump right into the Norbit survey. Jumping right in. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. I'll stop there, and I will come back up to 30 meters. And which direction are we headed then? Sorry. Knowing that the next generation is okay. right around the corner. Uh, I'm going to come up. Yep. To doing exactly what we're doing right now is the most amazing part about what we're doing today. It's very exciting. 
Uh, I centered out sat three. Yeah, uh, I can do that uh, in place of what's currently. Uh, do you want it in the upper right? No, wherever you had it before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe that's H12. Sorry, I didn't get the, the what was the heading? Five degrees? Pretty much dead north, right where I'm at. I'm pointing in the right direction. Okay, you get it engage, and I will. You catch up with me. Yeah. Johan, so you're going to go to waypoint five, and then start down into the. Can you zoom out a little bit, just so I can orient myself a bit? Sorry, yeah, I'm coming sure. in late. No problem. So yeah, we are pretty much at waypoint five. Okay, so we'll norbit to waypoint one, and then. Then, Correct. Uh, uh, yeah. Perfect. Yep. Down into it, and then waypoints two and three are, the are where, yeah, where we experienced venting perfect. in the past. So we'll come back to those and see what else Norbit reveals. Yeah. Nice job, to Rennie, to have these that image in the background too. It really helps see a little bit of the structure that we might find with the Norbit. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Let's do it. Chris, are you ready to start a survey? Well, it's, I mean, you got to get the ship up where I am, or I'd have to back down. So okay. You can yeah. I'm gonna start the ship moving, if that's all right with you, Chris, and then we'll just catch it. Yeah. What's he on? Those lab. of you watching, asking lab. about the squid. Okay. We do see a lot that'll flash by. Um, and yes. Again. Yes, we are on the right heading. We'll move. Great. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. The last couple of uh, ascents, we've actually been getting inked by those squid as we pass through. Kind of bumping into each bridge, other. Bridge, bridge, nav. Hi, could you track a line forward at zero, zero, 008 degrees, please? Great, thank you. How far are we going? Um, I think we can pretty much keep this heading at least till waypoint three, which is about 250 meters away. All right. We might make a few degree adjustment from there, but pretty much straight north the whole time.
Okay, ship is on the move. So our mission today will be to image these vents. Pumpkin still intact. Hey Bob, can uh, you turn port and starboard lights off so I can see what the image looks like? Do you want to move the arm? Um, yeah, you can you can turn them on. It's it, whatever. We'll we'll when we're down there, we'll uh, we'll shift them, okay. shift that light out, right? Yep. Once it's safe. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ada's on the move. So as good scientists, we've all made a hypothesis about the pumpkins. A lot of people are asking. Um, we're going to let the science do the talking and let you do your hypothesis as well as you continue to follow along. We don't want to spoil anything for you. So that's what science is all about, is exploration. There is no bedding pool that I know of at this point for the depth that they may have some sort of a change. Expected maximum depth today would be 1310 meters. We'll be looking at the hydrothermal vents, getting some imagery in, checking out the life forms that are around. Oh, we're zooming in on it? Okay. <laughs> it's trying to creep me out there. <laughs> It is Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's really creepy is when we turn off Atalanta, Atlanta's lights and see Herc in the dark. <laughs> yeah, you want to do that? It does you look cool. Do that. It is really neat to see. Go for it. Oh, Spooky. there you go. 
That is really cool. Atlantis always got an eye on Hercules, making sure that everything is working properly. Someone wanting to know if we have the time. I know that we're yeah. Don't don't tilt up and down. Approaching right. okay. things. Okay. Okay. Homan, can you tell us a little bit about At Atlanta? Someone remembering the old days of uh, Argus. At Atlanta, the sister. Uh, yeah, so uh, Atalanta is one of the two ROVs we send down, uh, and it acts as the you know the eye in the sky for Hercules, make sure that we can see what's around Hercules, uh, and also the condition that Hercules is in. It also gives some more lighting from another source, and it acts as a, a weight. Um, so that Hercules is a bit more stabilized. It doesn't have to carry the entire weight of the, the steel cable and tether. So Hercules can maneuver around a little bit easier than if it could uh, by itself. Thank you. Someone says they see bat ears. Did anybody see bat ears? Oh, I didn't can see you uh, come up a little bit? Yeah. No crows on deck, but we did have the, the booby birds up there taking a break, chilling out on our, our mast up front. I got a couple of good pictures of them today with the sunrise. It was really pretty. That little floater in the between there. Got the lights on that could be attracting other organisms, which could attract bigger organisms. Just always makes the descent down a little bit exciting to see because you never know what might pop up. Kristen, if there was one thing that you could see, what would you like to see? I think we're doing it today. I mean, yeah. the hydrothermal vents, that was definitely something I would like to see. I never got a chance to actually study them during my academic career, but I'll get to see some today. Well, if you happen to look at the quad channel, our captain has joined us, and I, I fear that I may have to add him to the tally list of people voting. Right now, <laughs> Johan, you and I are tied at four with the gnome at one, but our, our captain has joined us. Does the captain have an official name that the captain would like to go by? I'm the captain of cameras right now. Captain of <sighs> cameras, love it, love it. Arr. I'm losing control here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually disappointed that you don't have a costume on. This I, whole back row would be complete if you had a costume know, on. We I gotta find that. him something. Commandant. It was uh, <laughs> Commander <laughs> retired. Yeah, it's Jason Faye. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's the two expeditions back to back. It was Halloween was just that far enough away where it wasn't on the front of my mind, uh -huh. and so I 
grabbed my bag and came out to the ship and then kind of hit well, myself you know, there, in the forehead. There's plenty of makeup on board that we could turn you into something. I saw Maddie opened up a secret compartment there in the lounge that was stuffed with all kinds of costume stuff. Oh. So uh, there, there may be an opportunity. So you may have to take a quick little ganter downstairs to I'm see what you can come I'm not one to succumb to peer with. pressure. No. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I you know, he says that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one uh, no, that. Well, then we may have to move Johan back to the back so, so that we can have a whole row. Yeah, what? <laughs> Yeah, Jason, if you want to navigate today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dust off my old skills. Mm -hmm. Watch the brake light. See what it does. It should come out. Should You should see the brake. We're going down slope really super steep here, too. So I'm like... That's a cool view on Norbit. Yeah, yeah, so we're headed into Pele's crater here. This was a summit until earthquakes. Yeah, the bottom's dropping out like big time here. Yeah, yeah. earthquakes in 1996 caused the dome here to collapse. Well, so right now we're, we're going steep down slope, so I think that's kind of what may be an issue. Yeah. Right. Let me let me take a gander. I don't know. I've been keeping my eye on these pumpkins. I know that they're not our main mission, but it looks like the orange pumpkins netting is kind of peeling back a little bit. Oh. Can't wait. I don't know. So the only way that this is going to be I, do we have like a bets going on what's going to happen? Is there some we, sort of? We've uh, been talking online. Uh, we didn't want to spoil it for anybody, but we've definitely been making our own hypothesis because that's yeah, the cool so thing about science. Yeah, right. so you get to make that hypothesis that and then test it and see if that theory works. But we've got people that say implode. We've got people that say explode. Yeah, we've got people that are saying saturate. Keep an eye on the light. If it doesn't, if the brake doesn't release when you come out of the detent, then. Well, I just. But I'm wondering that's the if we're going to lose the orange pumpkin. Issue. So. If that net comes off. Oh yeah, we'll uh, we'll get a little zoom here when. Yeah. So there, it sounds like the uh, over the last uh, probably week we've been having intermittent problems with the winch, mm. uh, and and really just isolated we think to the controller here in the van. So we have an alternate control station on the social deck that will have a two or three people rotating through to control at Atlanta's depth and Herc's depth for that matter um, there. And it sounds like uh, some of the intermittent failures that we have, it might be creeping back up on us. So I'm sure we'll. Uh, maybe. No? Well, we, we went over the edge of the cliff there. So as the bottom fell out awful quickly. So mm. I think maybe it was not keeping up with it. Uh, so either way, we've got, anyway, even if we, we do have a problem, we've got a way to yeah. keep the mission going and work around it. So Jason, everyone heard you say you're not one to succumb to peer pressure, but someone wants to know bribery? Bribery, What about yeah. candy for a costume? Yeah. No, no, no. I, th I think I'm... Uh, <laughs> uh, Are you telling us this is your costume? If there is something in the drawer in uh, extra tall <laughs> or the opposite extreme, extra small. I, I, I go for extra sure small. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always awkward if you're just like, you know, like a big guy in an <laughs> ill-fitting thing. But if you're a big guy in something really small, it's like, oh, he's just doing that to be funny. You know, yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't realize that he just looks <laughs> foolish in short pants or something. All right, so someone was asking, what, were we looking at tanks in Satellite Feed 1? They are not tanks, Jonathan. Can you Sat tell us what those are? Ooh. Those, those, the two um, silver cylinders in Satellite Feed 1 are the stereo cameras, the, the 180 degree fish eyes of the Triclops. Yeah, I'm like keeping up with the Joneses here. Wide field camera array. So, uh, what can you just describe the dimensions of each of the pressure housings and what yeah. they're made of, kind of the colors, yeah, we'll, do, we'll scratch all the... Yeah, so uh, there are two cylinders. Um, they're approximately a foot long and maybe eight inches wide. And they're actually constructed of titanium. So they're a bright silver color 
Um, and on the front of them, there is a special, perfect uh, hemisphere of glass. Okay. Um, and I am going too fast. And that glass is uh, one of the elements that keeps the pressure at bay and allows the two lenses that are on the inside. Um, they're big fisheye lenses, so they can uh, record at a full 180 degrees this, circumference this around the front of the lenses. Core saving for this. Too steep? It's pretty steep, yeah. I mean, you see all the. It's not very smooth. <laughs> yeah. So those two cylinders are parallel to each other, and they're as close as we can get together. Now, if you're doing really good stereo. Yeah, um, we're trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm in auto altitude. So, if, you know, if the bottom drops out, we, we're racing to catch up with it, and yeah, so. So a difference in the stereo cameras here is if you're doing really good stereo, uh, you want the two lenses to um, basically be exactly what your eyes see. So this is... With so that's the same, the distance apart? Yeah, the like distance apart, the, because okay. that, that approximates when you render it in 3D. So um, to view, that approximates what your eyes see. So objects that are closer to you um, don't appear closer than they are in real life. And, uh, so if you have these kind of wider spacing, it is All the... Right, well, hang on. Let me get rid of it as... It's probably the same equivalent uh, as in terms of the eyes of the spacing of, uh, of something like a, a larger mammal that has good binocular vision. So maybe a dire wolf of old, a predator that was exceptionally large or something like a bear. Um, that's how they would perceive the world because that's the spacing between their eyes. So when you look at this, and I'm, I'm excited to start processing some of these informations. Here we go. Um, I think in your images we've got some. I routed it down satellite feed three, so Ooh. sorry. Hey, nice. thanks. Yeah. So in the images that will eventually um, broadcast out um, and uh, in full stereo, so once I process these, you're going to see uh, if you're wearing a headset um, for virtual reality or something like that, it's going to appear that the 3D is just a little off. And that's just something we couldn't avoid with this uh, setup for because the, the, the housings in, themselves have to be a perfect cylinder to withstand the pressures of, of deep sea exploration. So, How deep are the, these housings rated? Uh, over 66,000 meters. Um, Six. 66? Yep. 6,600. 6, oh, 6,600 oh, 6, 6, 6, meters. Okay. <laughs> it's the I pressure say. of the center of the <laughs> earth. <laughs> The, uh, built, built for the most extreme what, you, environment. David Attenborough. It's, so it's back. one thing to look at this, c the cylinder, and the way you described it, you know, kind of the silver color and a foot long and eight inches diameter. But what is inside? Like, if you removed the camera guts out of this thing, is it, is it like a cell phone camera in there, or is there is oh. it something you see on the side of the football game that's on the stand in the? Oh no. Yeah, well, oh no. Like oh no. Oh no, people understand. No, 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 no. What's inside there is Camera Captain. Please one of us. one of, excuse me. Cam, cam <laughs> pirate pirate camera captain here has to speak. Uh, no, I'm very we're very proud of the cameras that are inside of these. These are are really nice cinema grade cameras and by cinema grade they just have a very large, very sensitive sensor. They have fantastic what's called dynamic range. And what dynamic range means is that they can capture kind of really good highlights of highlights and really good darks of darks, all those subtle gradients um, that if you are watching this in a future IMAX or a dome theater projection, that really helps you kind of control how the picture looks at the end of the day. So inside of here, there are two little box cameras. Um, there may be four by four inches and they have the same sensor size as like one of your DSLRs, it's called a full frame sensor. Um, and in front of that, it's a big, high-quality piece of glass. Um, and as always, uh, you know, the glass is almost more important than the camera body, if not more the important. Um, so, but the challenge is, and the difference between this and Zeus is that um, this style of filmmaking requires post-processing. So, well, Zeus is the camera that we yeah. have on Atlantis. Yeah, Atalanta and and Hercules. Um, 
So, so those cameras are broadcast cameras. Those are more akin to uh, the type of camera that you'll see at a football game on the sidelines or um, at a golf game. It's a big box camera. It's meant to be on uh, basically 24-7 and deliver an image. Um, these cameras themselves are meant to record internally, be much more controlled, um, and especially when you're filming for something like um, for IMAX, Omnimax, dome theater projection, VR, um, the types of moves that you have to do are, are much more considered, slow, um, and and more cinematic. Um, and that's that's why uh, all three cameras together. They, they, that's why we when I say they're cinema, quote unquote, cinema grade. That means really nothing. It just means that they're uh, meant for more filmic uh, recording with a, a much heavier post processing uh, workflow on the back end. India. And as 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 the official camera captain here, I do love cameras, and so yes. I'm happy to answer all the camera questions that you have. So instead of having a hook on your, head, oh, I would have a you camera. have a have a, totally have a camera. Well, it's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dr. Ballard is actually sitting right behind me right now. Um, and I, I have been, he's always been somebody that has uh, invested in the quality of an image to bring around the world. Um, whether or not that's how he has um, helped guided how the lighting um, for some of these expeditions is set up to uh, investing in the, the literal hundreds of thousands of dollars that it requires to purchase cameras of this caliber. Uh, because these aren't just off-the-shelf items, right? Zeus, no. Zeus, that camera has lasted us for 15 years now. Uh, it's older than than the uh, Ocean Exploration Trust and, and the foundation of the EV Nautilus. Wow. Um, and so that that is a significant investment of, of financially to to a tool um, that enables us to do what we do, which is both do the science and communicate what we're seeing to the outside world. And that's exactly what our, our viewers are. They're they're seeing these images sometimes for the first time, and that's that's our hook, our hook, Captain. Arr, Arr, uh, I get it. Uh, to, <laughs> uh, to be able Devin, to Devin. entice. We, definitely to entice our viewers and to get them interested in what it is that we're doing. We get their support. Um, and then we get them interested in a whole nother generation that's like today I was talking to preschoolers and it was absolutely incredible to see them so excited to be learning about the ocean, um, to be communicating with me and for me to be able to touch them somewhere. Uh, someone is, is, is watching and the door has been opened and the intrigue has, has started. So new generations to come. Yeah, just like Kristen, right? It starts. It starts. It starts with some inspiration. It it it's really true. does. Yeah, absolutely. It really does, Kristen. I, I for those that might be just joining us, the, your your story that got you here has been quite interesting because every time I hear it, I, I hear and I pick up something new. Um, but you, this is not your first interaction with Dr. Ballard. No, my first interaction with Dr. Ballard was as a student in the classroom. He came live to. Uh, you know, over the airwaves, uh, showing us uh, black smokers in the Guaymas Basin in uh, off the coast of California. And Talking it, right back to those images. Yeah. Yep. You know, they all make that connection. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I've been studying marine chemistry ever since. <laughs> so it was those hydrothermal vents that got your attention? Absolutely, yeah. And this sparked that curiosity and that yep. wonder, and then mm -hmm. from there on, there you went. Yep. Curiosity and wonder that got you through OCHEM? Yeah, and physical chemistry and everything else. <laughs> oh gosh, I, it did. It did take me several semesters to get past P chem. That was that was a thing during my undergrad. Yeah, differential equations was not fun either. But no, no, <laughs> no. For whatever reason, organic chemistry clicked a little bit easier in my mind than the physical chemistry. Yeah, phys physical chemistry is mostly math. Yeah, physics. I, it, I felt a little offended. Johan, did uh, Chris stop the survey and then we're going to pick it back up where we left off? Or what's the strategy with the Norbit? Yeah, we are...
Okay, copy. We can also fly a higher altitude and let Chris, we get a narrower swath, right? So. So in addition to the imagery, we're working on um, getting some, some mapping done as well, using this uh, to create the images um, that you're seeing and what we'll be able to use later on in our programming. Uh, our maximum depth, someone wanted to know we're going to reach uh, expected max is 1310 meters today. So we're kind of headed down a slope right now towards the hydrothermal vents. And but we can do that at 50 meters altitude, right? So even if this, the terrain is steep, we don't have to be flying precisely as steep as the terrain. Yes. I mean, is that possible, Bob? You've said before that you can't rip that controller open. So to update the audience, we're um, the intermittent issue with the winch controller here in the van, or the winch controller overall, or at the remote workstation potentially, is uh, is rearing its ugly head. So we're we've come up off of the bottom. The survey has just paused for a second. We're going to try to do a little bit of troubleshooting because we'll be much more effective if we can control the depth of that Atlanta here in the van. Yes. Uh, so maybe the We'll do a little pilot swap so Bob can get into the controller there All right. and the, on the deck and just see if there's some smoking gun. Uh, if not, we can work. It's workable, but less efficient. And so it'll just uh, maybe um, reduce the amount of ground that we could cover here at Pele's Pits. So the controller we're discussing is a, uh, it's an aluminum box that sits up off the deck, uh, probably two or three feet. And uh, and it has a joystick that just has pay in, push forward and, and uh, or excuse me, pay out, push forward and pay in, pull back on the stick. And there's a, a light indicator there that allows the tells you if the brake has been released or engaged. And uh, and the problem seems to be in the the smarts associated with the brake. And this isn't like a really uh, intelligent system. It's micro switches and, and relays. And so we, we've gone through everything, everything topside here and it looked good. We found a few things that could use tightening up in the box on the social deck yesterday. We've kind of made all those, the assessment of the system, and still still haven't found the cause uh, of this. It's intermittent, because Human is 
continues to try the winch from up here and sometimes it will allow it it'll go sometimes it won't but uh, no problem from the remote works the remote station on the social deck so I think we have TJ at the winch controller now and uh, as soon as we get settled out here there might, there's going to be a little bit of troubleshooting and then we'll get back to it Nautilus is on a mission to map as much of the seafloor as possible. How much would you say we've actually accomplished? Uh, we'll it's really hard to put that in a percentage. Well, term. into this at the end of the season, we'll have the season statistics that they'll put together, and I don't have that right at my fingertips so far. Like a, the running total, uh, I don't have yet. Right. But um, as far as globally, I heard. Dr. Mayer mentioned the other day that that we're something like the 25 to 30 percent. 25 to 30 percent already at, already mapped. Awesome. At high resolution, so you know, in this, what are the talking points? Are that we know more about the Moon and Jupiter than we do about planet the bottom of the sea? Um, we have higher resolution yes. maps of those places than we do of Earth. Yeah, the physics of uh, mapping the seabed make it very difficult. And Dr. Mayer's got the calculation of the amount of money it would take to fund a program to, to go out and fill in these But holes. completely it's, doable. It is. It's, it's, yeah. If we just choose to do this rather than the, the next mission to Mars, it's right. a one-for-one one swap. You know, we right. could, like, so it's just a matter of uh, the political will. You know, it's a doable, knowable technology. It's just time, money, commitment to cause. Anybody want to share the types of creatures they've seen on the descent from the surface? Their favorites? We don't always get a lot of action working in this particular shift. Yeah, we we are the start start of the dive shift, right? So we mm -hmm. get the descent, and we, we we've been adding these mapping uh, missions at the beginning of some of these dives. So I think, and it'll happen. It's going to happen totally again today. Is we'll hand it off to the next crew. They'll be right at the yep. bottom, ready to go. Like do the, the most thing interesting thing. Did you thing. guys see that? From my perspective, you know, we're going to have Dr. Mayer coming in, who's you know a geologist by training, has a background that can help understand this. Where, um, so I think the audience will get great benefit from having the the uh, twelve to four team in the seat. Maybe Kristen will hang out and continue to contribute. Yeah, I definitely am hanging out for this one. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I think she's been waiting her whole life for these moments. Pretty much. I think the twelve to four watch wish the camera captain might not hang out, but I think they're going to be stuck <laughs> with him too. So. <laughs> I think Captain Camera's, the way, yeah, it's not Camera Captain. Captain, Captain Camera. Yeah, Captain Camera. Uh, someone had posted earlier that instead of having an eye patch, you had like a built-in camera in your eye. Oh, yeah. That would be pretty cool. Oh, my God. I totally should have done like a GoPro eye yeah. patch. Oh, oh that would have been fantastic. GoPro eye Just patch. recorded. That sort of gets towards the Borg side of things, though. Well, that is yeah. true. But isn't that where we're all heading? <laughs> My right eye, it records an 8K. <laughs> Ray-Ban just released, uh, in collaboration with uh, Meta, Facebook, they just released a really cool pair of uh, augmented reality sunglasses that include a really nice, well, not a really nice, a decent, no, not even decent, an adequate camera. An adequate ca yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. It can't touch your technology. That's only so great that you can get with uh, these cameras, but I would be kind of excited to walk around and just have the instant ability to record. So that's what they do? They record? Yeah, they record, and I think you can ask Meta's uh, AI to 
look at things, ask ask them about things. Oh. All right, so Johan, are we in a, we're just hanging out, waiting to troubleshoot the winch a bit and then get back to it when it's sorted? Yeah, uh, I think the slope levels out a fair amount. Yeah, so yeah. we'll talk, but hopefully we can uh, continue the survey okay. once everything's worked out. Yeah. I just did the math and it was about a 60 degree slope to start. Uh, if you want to chime in, uh, Robert just proposed uh, a thought that uh, Norbert data without uh, the DVL working very well is not very, not as useful. Captain, what say you with your eye? You think that, you think that that net on the orange pumpkin is peeling back a little bit? Well, we're going to have to zoom in later on, yeah, yeah. for sure. I think we, there's a few things we know about the pumpkins, though, at this point, don't we? Yes, they, they are neither imploded or exploded. So, yeah, if they were full of... Uh, matter. A what? They're full of matter gas like a compressible gas Did you know you were made so if there matter? was a void inside you matter i matter you oh, matter thank you i matter you matter cat matters the gnomes matter <laughs> the mantis matters it's only 10 o'clock in the get, morning are this we is like a, we're like punch drunk already on yeah. Yeah. She's, she's been know. up since. What time did you get up for your first interaction two, today? Yeah, two. Oh. Yes, she's two a.m. That's yeah, all. you have. That's some. Oh my gosh! Whoa. Someone's just arrived with skittles. No, Airhead. I choose Airhead. Okay, pass it down. Take so one and pass it. Oh, not that one. If uh, Take if one we down, pass if we know around. that we all if we know we all matter and we're good with that, <laughs> um, <laughs> I was thinking that if the pumpkins had a void in them that had a compressible gas like air, you know? Yeah. We would have something would have happened. Something would have happened. If that if that gas couldn't escape out of uh the pumpkin skin fresh, right. uh we would have seen some sort of one thousand two hundred and fifteen meters is where we are right now. Yeah. That's so a I, lot of intense. I pressure. think it's safe to say that either there was no void or that water infiltrated the uh, the void pretty quickly with no physical change so far. So now they said the orange one had some sort of a, a cut to it. Does anybody know that? And would that have allowed that water so to we're, seep it looks in? like uh, we're swapping. Yeah, we're we're swapping pilots. We're sending the uh, Dan will be able to speak to that because I think he might have done. Uh, so we can ask Dan. Robert Waters, who was flying Hercules to do some troubleshooting. Um, in the meantime, uh, we might go off SPL because there's a candy bowl being passed around <laughs> and we're all snacking <laughs> as as we uh, try to communicate here. 
Dan, do you know anything about the orange pumpkin having a, a cut inside of it? Is this some sort of sabotage accusation? Is that I, I, I wasn't making the accusation. Well, I, mean, that I think a pirate would be the least trustworthy person to. Uh, the least trustworthy? I don't know. Scoundrel of sorts. Uh, I believe the appropriate term is scallywag. Mm. <laughs> Dan is on SPL now, so you can ask him a question. Dan, hi, how are you? Welcome. Thank you. Dan, did they bring you in specially to fly in the blue water? Is that your specialty? Uh, we are uh, we're troubleshooting an issue with our winch right now, so I'm uh, look like it ended up holding station here in the middle of uh, Caldera, I believe. Yep. How far? I'm gonna uh, Small I'm fish. gonna hop off. SPL here, I'm trying to talk to the deck. Yeah, yeah. Someone has asked, what organism would you say would fit the description of Halloween the best that we possibly could see? And may have already actually possibly seen for a split second. Possible that we saw a vampire squid. When? On our descent. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, nice. Ro Robert saw it, caught it, and spotted it, and called it out. And as soon as he said it, it was gone. Luckily, we record everything that's uh, what happens. We'll play that back. Yeah. Get to the bottom of it. So vampire squid would definitely be fitting. And at this point, honestly, everything has its own little unique feature. Yep. I guess we could... Uh, if we get a slower start to this dive than we anticipated thinking about the schedule in the next couple of days we could extend here if necessary you know there's no reason to if it's compelling once we get to the sites you know we don't have to pressurize here you go have a dongle it's not yours but it might work of course Dongles are in high demand. Yeah, yeah, it's true. We're, we're living a dongle life now. Kristen, do you have any pets? <laughs> we haven't talked about pets yet. I do have pets. Oh, I yeah? Have, I have two dogs. Ooh. What, what kind? What are their names? Uh, Susie is a Chihuahua Dachshund mix, and Molly is some kind of terrier mix. Oh. Yeah. How big are uh, the... They're both about... 10 to 15 pounds, depending on how many snacks they've had. <laughs> yeah. And who's uh, watching them while you've been out here at sea with us? My mom has had them for months. I've been traveling a ton for work, so they've been hanging out in Florida with my mom, oh, having a Florida. vacation. <laughs> now, now I generally observe that Chihuahuas and Dachshund are either filled with terror, trembling terror or rage. Um, she does both. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Tremble dog? Sometimes. But she definitely, uh, you know, she barks first and asks questions later kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you leaving, going from here to Florida? No, I'm actually headed back to L.A. Uh, for some more work meetings. Uh, so I have two work meetings near L.A. in San Diego and China Lake. And then I will head back yeah. to the D.C. area. I won't get the dogs back for a little while. <laughs> oh. They like hanging out in the yard at my mom's house. They like to vacation in Florida, so they're having I fun. I mean, that's fair. Snowbirds. <laughs> Snowbirds. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so are your meetings setting up and developing the internship programs at the different Actually, no. naval opportunities? So or? I work on another program with the Office of Naval Research, the in-house uh, independent laboratory research. So we will be going to see what type of work's been going on over the last year mm. at those places with the the researchers there so it will be pretty interesting i haven't actually gone to the labs for this yet uh i started in 2020 so uh -huh. my my career with the office of naval research has been sort of bizarre <laughs> what did you do before i have done many things uh i have worked with scientific instrumentation companies i have worked on the hill uh, i worked at usda randomly um for a little while um so i've, I've done just a little bit of everything were USDA around DC? Yep, on the mall. 
Oh, on the mall, not the big park facility? No. Oh, okay. I worked for the Undersecretary for Research, Education, and Economics. Wow, oh, cool. Yeah, it was really cool. How about you, Jason? What, what's your pet scenario? Uh, we have uh, one dog. His name is Louie. He's Louis like 100 Louis. pounds. He is 100 pounds of love. Yeah, he's... he's uh, what kind of dog is he, 100 pounds? He's a lab mix. Oh, okay. You know in Harry Potter, the dog that Sirius turns into? Like, like whatever that was called? Sirius Black. Sirius Black dog? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like Louie. Yeah. 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 Big black, big black scary dog, but in fact, he's, he's about he the He fits nice into our family. We're all fairly tall, and so is Louie. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like big, awkward, runs awkward. around. <laughs> <laughs> so it's similar to me. My dogs are little, and like we kind of look alike, too. So I mean, that's okay. how it has to go, right? You look like your, you know, like your oh dogs. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> now similar, I'm getting similar a whole... my, my dog, my dog, who has gained just a little bit more weight ever since we've had kids and is generally just a little bit more quiet and lazy. <laughs> Jonathan, interestingly, uh, is the cause of all dogs being banned from the URI campus with donut. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Excuse me. Not that I donut <laughs> misbehaves, but... I. Yes, sir. Yeah. Jonathan's got the perfect office to... Uh, to... Hold on. All right, so you, if you can see uh, on satellite feed one, the Dan Cormery and the pilot and uh, Captain Camera are, while we're here in blue water, playing with the extension of the camera onto what is normally the forward bio box armature apparatus. And so they're look if you I guess we don't have the triclops camera going out on the satellite, but we're kinda looking at how the lights occlude the lenses and what might be the perfect spot for the cameras in and out. Jonathan, be careful that laser might burn a hole through the uh, housing. Jonathan, anyway, going are, back. Are you worried about the laser burning a hole in the housing? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> or cutting that cable, maybe? I <laughs> we had someone asking it, why we had the lasers on since we weren't measuring anything. Uh, that's a good question. Um, but I think it just looks cool maybe in blue water to have the lasers. I, I mean, it does. Yeah. It, it, I, I'm it sorry, does. though. I, I have to get back to this accusation that, in fact, it was my dog that required that, that in any way had to do with the reestablishment of an existing rule that dogs are not allowed on campus. Our director, in fact, your boss, mm -hmm. also brought mm -hmm. his dog in which is a golden doodle, which should tell everyone about how it behaves inside of an office versus I, my dog who just slowly trundles in and goes to sleep. I think um, I think across the campus, the OECI, the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, is a very small part of the campus, but is probably the biggest reason why 
the dogs have been recently been banned <laughs> from the GSO campus. We had we got really comfortable having the the pups in the office, and uh, I don't think everyone has the sort of office environment that can sustain that, and so the dean had to had to shut it down. <sighs> That's sad. I mean, it was it was a defining feature of why that campus was cool. So we should and it still is. I think it's yeah. Well, let's just say the donut can fit inside of a backpack. Don't <laughs> We've been smuggling donut, donut in for... Yeah, her name's Donut. She's a good girl. What type of dog is Donut? Uh, she is a small lab beagle-ish mutt. Yeah. She's a good girl. She's uh, aged, gotten more gray hair in the last three years. I, I compare it to how much gray hair Barack Obama got in his first three years of office. Same yeah. thing with when we had kids, man. She went from just looking svelte and all black dog uh -huh. to now she's basically full white. <laughs> Poor thing. And my kids just absolutely love hanging on her, and uh, she could she could do without. But these are the consequences of having kids, and I tried to explain to her that this is just the new era. How do you think she took it? She took it. Not very well. No. Yeah. yeah no. It's okay. Devin, how about you? I do. I have Pets two. I have two dogs and one cat. Um, my Jonathan. dogs are Australian Shepherds. Their brother sister pair, uh, Alex Trebek and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, <laughs> are their names. <laughs> <laughs> Happily named. One is very calm and feisty, and uh, one is full of energy and uh, very needy. They're a herding very, dog. Is that they the are a herding that, dog? Yeah. Yeah. They pretty much have mastered herding my husband. That's that's the, like their go-to right now because they know better with me because yeah. I'm just like no, and they're just they're all about hey dad let's do this and he falls for it every time, <laughs> falls for it every time. It is always interesting when my grandchildren come over though and they're playing in the backyard. I I do in, like specifically watch their behaviors, and they are intent on keeping the kids in a particular area. And, and if one of them kind of wanders away in the backyard, they're right there next to them and just kind of guiding them back. And that's just an instinct that they've yeah, been born with, which is really cool because yeah. um, it's, it's pretty cool to watch that happen. But, yep. And then I have a rescue cat, uh, and her name is Kalu, and she fetches better than my dogs do. She fetches. Huh. I, you don't she, hear that often. Yeah, no, she is a fetcher, and I have special little toys for her that I can shoot like a little uh, frisbee yeah. and it just goes out there and she's boom she's right on it and then she and brings it brings it back to me and we will do it repetitively until no she gets herself tired and then she'll pant like the dogs huh. yeah it's the coolest she's the coolest cat she is the coolest cat a cat that fetches I a like cat that. that fetches she also has a backpack have you seen the bubble backpacks or that you oh, can put I your cat love in. Those. Yes. Oh. So I'll take her and I'll put her in a bubble backpack, and it's like all dome. The dome on the back is all clear, and it's got air holes in it. And I stick her back there, and so we'll go and like play shopping it. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's I love just that. Backpack, backpack kitty. I can't imagine putting Louie on my back. <laughs> Hundred pound oh, behemoth. That'd be so great. She also walks on a leash. Jeez. Yeah. She's pretty talented. You sure it's a cat? It sounds like uh, a dog. Yeah. <laughs> no? Trust me, I got pictures I can show you. Does she like the bubble backpack? She's she's not crazy fond of it, but she likes um, where we get to wherever we're going. Mm -hmm. And she likes to, you know, check things out around where we're going. She knows it's part of the deal. Mm. Not a big fan of the car, though. She does not like being in the car. And you get those deep whales, and she's like, where are we going? <laughs> Pets really do make an impact on our lives, though, don't they? Yeah, it, it, especially um, being out to sea, gone for six weeks here, five or six weeks. It's almost nice to get the photos of the kids petting and playing with the dog. And you're like, you know, there's like, I don't know, it's just another thing to make them comfortable and yeah. you know hopefully yeah. not forget that dad's gone but um, 
something for them to love on. So someone wants to know, does anyone have fish as pets? Oh, we do not. No. But we've been a Navy family for a long time, and moving fish was always a real challenge. Oh, yeah. So kind of kept us out of the fish game. All right, Robert Waters is back entering the van. This should be the... Uh, Defining moment. So we're eavesdropping on the pilots discussing the uh, setup on the with the winch. Sounds like the f control station here in the van is unlikely to be utilized anymore. And we'll probably run the winch control from the social deck. We uh, Yeah, so they're talking about the comms path between here in the the winch room so below the deck that you see occasionally in the stern view of nautilus the winch that has this huge spool of maybe six thousand plus meters of uh six eight cable is below decks and so to troubleshoot the controller you kind of go into the belly of the ship to the winch room and then start your way up from there and when they try to do something you can see if the controller releases the brake or if the signals are are coming in as expected then they work their way back up through the control system and so i think we've we've the control room the winch room is everything's working there and the social deck control station everything's working there but there's something something fishy in the in the van here jason i can put uh we have winch cameras um available to put those down set for oh yeah three. you could yeah I mean, he said something fishy. <laughs> yeah, so Pete's gonna. Okay, cool. Yeah, so sat, satellite feed three. Oh, that's great. Folks at home, this is the actual. This is the winch room. So if, uh, in an optimal conditions, if uh, the operator of at Atlanta pushes forward on the winch, that's pay out cable, and so you'll see the drum spin, and basically feeding wire through the A-frame on the stern of the ship and down to increase the depth of at Atlanta. And just the opposite, pull back on the cable, you'll see the winch spool in and uh, at Atlanta comes up in depth. And if we could describe that for someone that might just be listening, yeah, that so looks like a, a spool of thread that you would do. But huge. Yeah, yeah. but huge. This massive. is thousands of pounds right. of uh, weight. The 6.8 cable is, um, I, I can probably look up the pound per foot of this, pound per meter might be helpful but you'd have that same concept of that cylinder shape with all of the string that would be wrapped around it but all this fiber optic cable and um, all that's attached that goes as far down as Hercules is capable of reaching so Let's our winch see. operates that allows it to go in and out you know what we need this bounce. is another ONR project I love coming up with these ONR projects while we're on watch is now with chat GPT and BARD uh, we should have a chat tool like that that's listening to our dialogue. And when we say, hey, how much is the 6-8 oh, cable It should just give us, way? feed us the answer. It could oh. just be queuing these yeah. answers up. We, yeah. it, we would look brilliant. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> we, if we, we had really all would. these facts at our fingertips. Now here I've got Does that make us on AI keyboard. then? If, if just Behold feeding them? us yeah. the Oh, yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm just a mouthpiece.